Hey, what's up guys? Tanmay here for Simple Snippets and this is the second video tutorial on fundamentals of C++ and practical programs. In the previous video tutorial, we learned about what a computer programming language is, why it's used and also learned about its types. We also read some theoretical aspects of C++ programming language and its applications. So in this video tutorial, I'm going to introduce you with the very first C++ program which is a very simple program wherein we will print hello world on the command prompt. So that is the reason why its name is hello world program. Now one point to note here is in all these programming tutorials, we won't be designing a GUI that is our programs won't have a graphical view. All the programs will be executed and run on the command prompt. Now you might get a bit confused about some terms and keywords in the first program since we haven't really discussed any basic concepts and syntax of C++ programming. But my intention is to show you the basic structure and flow of C++ program and I'm sure that will be pretty clear in this example. So let's see our first C++ program. Now before I start with the program explanation, there are two things which you need to know when you want to run a C++ program. First of all, this is a high level programming language so it is not directly understood by the computer. Computers only understand low level or machine language. So the first thing that we need to do is compile this program. Now this process is done by a compiler. A compiler is a program that converts high level programming languages that we write into machine language. And the second thing that the compiler does is that it checks for errors and mistakes in our code. So if we miss out on any semicolon or we have made any error or mistake in the code, the compiler shows that error and on which line that error is being done so that we can rectify it. Okay, so now let's move on to the program explanation. So what I'll do is I'll explain you in brief what each line does and how the program flow goes. So let's start with the first line. The first line starts with a double slash and then I've written some text that is my first program. So this is a comment line. All lines beginning with two slash signs are considered comments and do not have any effect on the behavior of the program. So why did I write that? So this is used so that the programmer can use them to include short explanations or observations within the source code itself. So imagine you writing thousand lines of code and you forget what a particular line of code is doing. So you can add a comment over there. You can explain it in English that what that function is going to do. So in this case, this line is a brief description of what our program is. That is, it is our first program, right? Okay, so moving on to the second line. It starts with hash include. Now lines beginning with a hash sign are directives for the preprocessor. So they are not regular lines of code, but indication for the compiler's preprocessor. In this case, the directive hash include tells the preprocessor to include the iostream standard file. Now iostream, which is written in the angular brackets, is a standard file which has definitions for basic standard input output. Now don't get worried about what this standard input output library in C is. I'll explain you in simple language and why it is used. So we need this file for our program and why we need it, I'll explain you in a minute. So let's move on to the third line using namespace standard. Now all elements of the standard C++ library are declared within what is called a namespace. So the namespace with the name standard. And in this particular case, we are using the namespace named standard. In order to access its functionality, we declare with this expression that we will be using these entities. So this line is very frequent in C++ programs that use the standard library and in fact it will be included in most of the source codes including these tutorials. Now if you are confused about what namespaces are, you don't have to be worried about it. You will understand as we go ahead with the programming. So let's go ahead with the next line that is the fourth one wherein we have written int main. This line corresponds to the beginning of the definition of the main function. So anything with a parenthesis is known as a function. The main function in this case is a special function because it is the starting of every execution of C++ code. That is, the main function is the point by where all C++ programs start their execution. Now for this reason, it is essential that all C++ programs have a main function. The word main is followed in the code by a pair of parentheses. So this is why because it is a function. In C++ what differentiates a function declaration from other types of expressions are these parentheses. Now right after these parentheses, we can find the body of the main function which is enclosed in opening and closing curly braces. So whatever contained in these braces is known as the body of the function. So let's move to the line number six, wherein I have written C out. Then I have two angular brackets, which is known as insertion operator. Then in double quotes, I have written hello world with a semicolon at the end. So this line is a C++ statement. A statement is a simpler compound expression that can actually produce some effect. In fact, this statement performs the only action that generates a visible effect in our first program. 
that is we'll just print this hello world string onto the command prompt and you'll see when we run this program as well now you must be wondering what the cout is now cout represents the standard output stream in c++ remember why we told that we need the io stream file so this is the reason why we included the io stream file and you have using the namespace standard because the object that is cout has its definition in the io stream file which is inside the namespace standard I still might be confused about it but then you just have to understand that the definition or the working of this cout keyword or an object is specified in those files so that is the reason why we need the io stream file and the namespace standard now notice that the statement ends with a semicolon character this character is used to mark the end of the statement and in fact it must be included at end of all expression syntax statements in all c++ programs now this is one of the most common syntax errors done by beginners as well as intermediate programmers so let's move on to the last line of code that is return 0 with another semicolon the return statement causes the main function to finish remember we started the main function with int main so that int is the return type of the function main now return type is something when a function after its execution returns a value and in this case since it is a integer type it is returning 0 now we haven't discussed data types but in this case just for the sake of this program remember that int means integer and in this case this function main returns a integer value so that is the reason why we have to write return 0 now if you don't write this return 0 it will give you an error you can also write return 1 2 3 or any other integer but make sure it has to be an integer so that's it let's see how this program runs in dev c++ ide now if you don't have the ide i'll put the download link in the description or you, you can download any other ide like code blocks or turbo c whichever you prefer okay so i have already written this code and i just open that file So you can see here's the name of the file hello world dot cpp. So dot cpp is the extension for every C plus plus program file. You can see the first line wherein I have added a comment my first hello world program. Then I have included the io stream file. Then I am using the namespace named standard. And here's the starting point of my program that is int main. So I'm gonna just go ahead and click on this execute button wherein I have to first compile this program. Or you can directly use the shortcut key F9. So as you can see here, processing C plus plus source file is there. and we get a compilation result so we have zero errors and zero warnings so we have successfully compiled this program now to execute or run this program you can click on run or use the shortcut keyword f10 and there you go with a command prompt coming up and you can see the output as hello world on the first line so you have successfully run the first hello world program in c++ now my main motive was to make you understand how the structure of a typical c++ program is so what i mean to say is we will be seeing these two lines frequently in a c++ programs that is the preprocessor directive and the using namespace standard line then we will always have a main function in every program of c++ so this block would be pretty common now the content inside the function may vary but we always have this main function and the execution as i mentioned earlier will start from this main function so this is the most simplest structure of our typical c++ program and we'll be encountering this further in our other programs as well okay so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood the basic structure of a c++ program as well as the flow and how to execute and compile it in the dev c++ ide now we also have a dedicated c++ android application wherein we've covered up many practical programs with their respective outputs So I'll put the download link in the description section so that you can check it out as well. Now if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you get notified when we upload the next video. Peace.